Hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl Butler, and you're listening to the Mighty Mommy Quick and Dirty Tips podcast, which will help make your life as a parent a little bit easier and a lot more fun. Welcome. This is episode 299 called Nine Crucial Life Skills to Teach Your Child. As my older children head off to college, I found myself reflecting about how quickly the time goes. Even though I've spent over 20 years in the trenches of parenting with my eight kids, it still amazes me at how little time we parents have to impart valuable life lessons to prepare our kids for the real world. So today, I'm going to share the nine most important skills and values that you can teach your children at a very young age to help strengthen their character as they grow into adulthood. Skill number one, good manners. As modern manners guy will tell you, the value of having good manners cannot be overestimated. In fact, even newborns are old enough to begin learning the basics of good manners. The simple gesture of saying, please and thank you, is a great place to start. Use the phrases when you're swaddling, feeding, or any other time it's appropriate. Continue the practice as your baby grows into toddlerhood. When she excitedly brings you her favorite toy, say, Thank you for sharing your doll. Even at this very young, nonverbal age, your child will be observing and soaking in all of the interactions like a thirsty sponge. The more you exhibit the basics of good manners, the more likely these examples will become a routine way of life for your child. Skill number two, learn to swim. I grew up on the ocean and around pools, so my parents made sure that my four siblings and I learned to swim before we headed off to kindergarten. The American Academy of Pediatrics now recommends that children between the ages of one and four may be less likely to drown if they've had formal swim instruction. Each of my kids was introduced to basic swim lessons starting at the age of three, and it has always been a comfort to know that they could survive if they were ever faced with an emergency situation in the water. Skill number three, show gratitude. Raising kids in this very materialistic world is not always easy, especially when they are constantly surrounded with hundreds of cool new items, such as the latest electronics, brand name clothes, toys, and everything else in between. Sure, we want our kids to have the best things in life, But we also need to teach them that even though they may not have the latest and greatest gadgets and the -the top-of-the-line basketball shoes, they still have plenty to be grateful for. Like good manners, instilling a sense of gratitude starts at a very young age. Start with simple reminders such as pointing out how lucky they are to have warm jackets in the winter or a car to drive them to their after-school activities. Remind them how fortunate they are to have grandparents who love to read them stories or siblings to support them through life. Plant the seeds of gratitude when they have a very young start so that they can learn to appreciate the many gifts they have. And skill number four, tell the truth. Teaching the value of honesty to a child is one of the best gifts parents can give. There are so many gray areas when it comes to telling the truth, which allow for rationalizing what honesty is all about. Kids are inundated with opportunities to be dishonest at school, at home, with their friends, and in dozens of other places that make up their daily lives. And it's our job to teach them right from wrong and the consequences that come from lying. As we know, children learn from example. So when they see their parents stretching the truth, it sends a message that it's okay to say one thing and do another. For example, if you tell the PTO president that you can't help at the book fair because you have to be away that evening, and then you go out to dinner with your husband instead, your child will internalize that a white lie is no big deal. Instead, Let your actions demonstrate that telling the truth is always the best decision, and you'll be laying solid ground for them to follow suit. Skill number five, advocate for themselves. Whether you have an overly sensitive child or perhaps a child who learns differently and has a tough time keeping up with his peers in the classroom, you'll not always be there to intervene when this child needs help. Teaching a child to stand up for himself or to speak up when he doesn't understand a lesson that's being taught in school will serve him well in many areas of his adult life if he learns to do this at a young age. My daughter, who started college this year, had a significant speech delay when she was a young child. Since then, she's had to work twice as hard as her peers to complete her school assignments. Her biggest obstacle was processing some of the instructions that were given to her orally by her teachers. If they were speaking too fast, she had great difficulty 
comprehending what was being taught. As early as third grade, she had to stop the teacher and ask him to repeat what he had just said. At first, she was made fun of by the other children, but because we role played at home on how to appropriately ask for help, she became very confident in her ability to get clarification on anything she wasn't understanding, even in front of a large classroom. By the time she reached high school, kids loved being in classes with her because she was one of the only students brave enough to raise the questions that others were thinking, but didn't have the courage to ask. Skill number six: manage money. Most kids leave home and head off to college without knowing the difference between a debit and credit card. Or how to balance a checkbook? I know because I was one of them. We spend tons of time teaching our kids to tie their shoes, to read, to ride a bike, to drive, but we often don't invest effort in teaching them how to manage their money, and that is a big mistake. As soon as your kids start earning an allowance or working a part-time job, you can start teaching them how to save and budget their money. My colleague Laura Adams, aka Money Girl. Has some great advice about helping your child learn this crucial skill. If your kids get a solid foundation about money management while they're young, they have a great chance of becoming fiscally responsible as adults. Skill number seven: empathize and apologize. Just as it's important to teach your kids to have manners and gratitude, it's also imperative to teach them how to apologize when they've said or done something wrong. In my episode called Seven Ways to Raise a Caring Child. I share my top suggestions for instilling empathy and compassion in your child right from birth. Skill number eight: make healthy choices. As a busy mom who also has type two diabetes, I can't stress enough how important it is to teach your child about healthy nutrition. Believe me, I know how challenging it can be to prepare a healthy meal at the end of a long day when it would be much easier to grab takeout instead. But like all the skills we discussed before. Kids learn many of their eating habits from what they witness while growing up. If they see us munching on fat-laden cookies the minute we walk in the door from work because we're stressed and starving after a long day, we're giving them the green light to do the same thing. On the other hand, when we incorporate smarter choices like having a bowl of fruit on the kitchen island instead of cookies, they'll learn that it's a better way to fuel your body. My colleague Monica Reinagel, the nutrition diva. Has many wonderful episodes about how to keep your family eating healthy and delicious foods. Check out how nutrition affects your brain, get kids to eat healthier, how to fight childhood obesity, an easy stress-free way to plan healthy meals, and many others. And skill number nine, my favorite, choose happiness. As corny as it may sound, true happiness really is an inside job. Our families, friends, careers, homes, cars. Wardrobes, vacation destinations, and anyone or anything else we interact with or have possession of cannot determine whether we are happy or miserable. That's all up to us. In my opinion, this is definitely one of the best lessons we can teach our kids: that we have the power to choose whether or not we let our circumstances dictate how we feel. It may not be easy, but if we teach our kids to focus on the silver linings when life isn't being so kind, they'll be better equipped to roll with the unexpected ups and downs that they'll inevitably face when they're in adulthood. What are some of the important life skills you want your kids to learn? Share your thoughts in the comment section at quickanddirtytips.com/slash/mighty-mommy, or post your ideas on the Mighty Mommy Facebook page. Thanks for listening, and until next time, happy parenting.